Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. For the standard, civilized version of this video, please click the link at the top or in the About comments below. Also in the about comments of this video, you'll see links to other oil related uh, videos, some mine, some not mine, and if you'd like for them to just play one after the other, uh, click on my playlist on my channel and choose the engine oil playlist and that'll let you roll through several of the videos that I talk about engine oil in your car. I apologize, but this is all rant. This really is making no sense to me. I'm talking about oil again. Because since I released my oil video, or my last two oil videos, this has just gotten crazier. It's like, really, do you not hear what I'm saying? Do you not hear the words that's coming out of my mouth? It kind of reminds me of my supervisor back when I was in the military. He used to say, Robert, the more I teach these guys, the dumber I get. This makes no sense. People, put the right oil in your vehicles. Now, some of the message I'm getting on my YouTube channel are jokes. People joking about their oil, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I get these messages that just boggle me and blow my mind. Listen, if your engine is making noise noise that it didn't used to make, there's a chance that something is wrong with the oil that you're using. That is one sign that something is wrong. Deal with it. Don't ignore it. Number one, the oil level might be low. If it's low, top it off with the right oil. The right oil. I get this message from this guy. Hey, when my car warms up, my engine's making this ticking noise. If you're a Volvo owner, the ticking noise is probably your lifters ticking. If your lifters are ticking, it's one of two things usually. One, the oil is too low. Number two, you're using the wrong oil in the vehicle. Now, it is summertime, people. Summertime means the weather is warmer. Look on my dash. My car thinks that it's 103 degrees outside. No matter how you shake that down, it feels like it's 103 to the car. I'm out in the desert in the summer in the hottest part of the day. It's like 103 degrees. When I look at my owner's manual, I look at the oil quality. It's got to meet these specifications in here. That means my oil jug needs to have some of this information on there or it needs to exceed some of these weird initials. Now, viscosity, stable ambient temperatures. That means that if I'm in an environment where my ambient temperature is below minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit or below 20 degrees Celsius, I should be using 5 weight. Five weight. See, it goes under there. That line and above, I should not be using five weight. I should be using 10W. So, if you're in an environment that your temperature Celsius is over minus 20, Fahrenheit is over minus 4, you in no ways should be using. 5W oil in your vehicle. I have no problem with Valvoline products. But there must be some kind of special sale on this red bottle Valvoline material. This oil must be like buy two get three free. Because I'm getting message after message seeing person after person with these red bottle 5W30 Valvoline oil bottles. Semi-synthetic. Semi-synthetic is not real good for a car with a turbo. Cut it out. You need synthetic. 
If it's like 104 degrees outside, why do you have 530 in your car when 530 is not good for any temperature above 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius? If the temperature that you're driving your vehicle exceeds 68 degrees Fahrenheit any part of the day, you should not be driving around with 530 in your car. And then when I point this out to you, you're going to recommend or suggest that it's a good idea since your oil change is not due for another 24, 2500 miles, that it's a good idea to go ahead and let that ride out in the engine when you know it's the wrong oil in the car until your next oil change? Really, it's going to be a better idea to save $17.50 to risk your engine wear versus put the right oil in there today. Really, that's, that's a good idea. That's what you're going to choose to do. You're going to choose to ride out this 530 instead of changing the 1040 or something. That'll be a better oil for your temperature. You're going to ride that out. I'm going to see if my engine will last another 2,500 miles with the wrong oil in it before I switch to 10, 10W40 or 1540. That's what you're going to choose to do. If you are anywhere south of I-40 in the United States, you need to be running either 1040 in your white block Volvo or 1540 in your white block Volvo. Why in the world are we having conversations about you having 530 in your vehicle? It's summertime. Right here on the chart, the recommended oil for between minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit and 104 degrees Fahrenheit is 1030. Okay, right now I'm at 104 degrees. So, one more degree... And I should be running something like 1540, but as I strongly recommended several of you people to do, go 1040. Because 1040 is going to move this scale, I believe, above the 104 degrees. If you're running 1030, bump it up to 1040. Hey, Robert, I watch so many of your videos. I really enjoy watching your videos. But you know what? My engine's starting to make some noise. It's ticking. It's louder than it used to be. I don't know why. Oh, really? What kind of oil are you running? Well, you know what? I got a turbo car, and man, I love this Valvoline Red Bottle 5W30 semi-synthetic. Oh, you do realize you're in the desert right now, right? Oh, yeah, it'll be okay. Now, you do realize it's like a 100... And 14, 120 degrees in Arizona, right? Oh, yeah. Now, you are driving through Arizona, right? Yeah. But my owner's manual recommends 530. Yes, it does. If you're like minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit or colder and under 68 degrees Fahrenheit on the warm days. Other than that, you need to be down into the heat part of this schedule. Not in this cold part of this schedule. Well, Robert, you know, my engine's making noise, but I think it'd be good to go ahead and ride out this oil change interval since this oil change interval has 2,500 miles left. Can't believe it. Now, a full synthetic oil change, if you're doing it yourself, it costs you about $40 or less. Actually, it cost me $35. Right now, I'm running this Mobile One 10W40. It has this SAE certification API service SN service pack in there. It's the full synthetic Mobile One oil. It has all of these protection wares. It's good for cars above 75,000 75, miles uh, mileage. It's got all this stuff on here at Walmart. Cost me $24. Another quart, which tops mine's off right when I'm doing the oil change. Cost me another $7.
So $32 a minute for oil. I'm getting my oil filters at Volvo supply places for about five bucks a piece. So for $37, I'm changing the oil on my car. Well, Mr. Robert, thanks for your information, but it only makes uh, the noise every once in a while when it's like hot outside and I've been driving for a while. So I'm going to ride out this, I don't know, $12 worth of oil change I have left and save maybe $18 on the next oil change. If I change it now, that will cost me $18. So I don't think I'm going to do that. In the meantime, the car is registering 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Man, do you really think it's going to be worth doing internal engine damage and internal engine repairs? You think that's going to cost you less than $17.50? Really? That's the decision we're going to make. We're going to try to save that $17.50 versus getting the oil change right now and getting the oil viscosity weight and the proper range for the temperature okay th that's what we're going to do well mr robert i live in ohio and one day it may be real cold and the next day it's kind of hot man let me tell you something i grew up in pittsburgh pennsylvania i know what the climate is like between i-40 and the Great Lakes or the Canadian border. It does not get under 4 degrees Fahrenheit in between April and the middle of October. It's not going to happen. 1040 is a better choice. Run 1040 in your warm months and 1030 in the cold months if you live in North America. There ain't going to be too many days that you're going to try to start your car and it's under minus four degrees. Now, if you live in a climate that it gets under minus four degrees, then go ahead. Use 530. But don't give me this stuff about it being so cold in June that you can't use 1040. Not in the United States. Uh-uh. I just seen a couple days ago where it was 97 degrees in New York City. So don't tell me how hot it is or how cold it is. You need to pay attention to your owner's manual or you're going to be wearing your engine out. It, it don't matter to me. I'm good. My engine is fine. I just drove 9,200 miles in 38 days with no engine problems at all with my vehicle. I'm good. You go ahead and run your 530, run your half synthetic, Run your turbo like crazy when it's 120 degrees outside. Go right ahead. But I'm going to pay attention to my owner's manual and try to do this thing right so I don't have any problems with my lifters, my crank bearings, my pistons, my rings, my valves, and all that kind of stuff. So, hey, if you want to ignore it or try to get some more miles out of some oil that didn't belong in your engine... Go right ahead, but don't send me no messages acting like you're doing the right thing because it makes no sense to me. I'm out. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.